What's up everybody, it's Josh here. In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to indent bullet lists in Divi. So by default, when you have text in Divi and you give it either a bullet list or a numbered list, it's gonna look like this. Not so appealing, very hard to read, and, and actually one thing I wanted to mention is that this little trick I'm gonna show you is gonna work for both bulleted lists and numbered lists. So it's gonna be a very handy trick for you moving forward. But again, it looks like this. There's no spacing. You know, with most text programs, when you do a bullet list or a numbered list, it automatically indents and automatically gives some spacing around those items. Unfortunately, in Divi right now, that's not the case out of the box, but I've got a super handy trick and we're gonna fix that. What we're gonna do is we're gonna make it look like this. Ah, look at that, much, much better. There's some spacing around these list items, and then each one of these items has a little bit of spacing around it as well, so it's much more uh, pleasing to the eye, and it just looks a lot better. And one thing I will say, I recommend this in my website design course, anytime you do a bullet list or a numbered list, always make it pop away from other text. It's much easier to read this way, and side note, Google loves bullet lists and numbered lists. Reason being is because unless it's a big long blog post, people don't generally read web pages, they scan web pages. So anytime you can put information into a bullet list or numbered list, that's the way to go. But the trick is we need to make it look pretty. So let's dive right into it. Now, there's a number of different ways you could go about this. You could take this section right here and just put it into a separate text module. And I should say both of these sections are just a couple text modules with a, a heading, some basic text right here, and then a list. But you could do a separate text module and you could give it its own padding, or you could go in here and you could indent it with the WordPress editor. But listen, that all, I mean, those are other workarounds to it, but that's gonna be very confusing and complex when you're doing a lot of pages. So what we wanna do is we wanna create a way to make this automatically have this look. So anytime we do a, bu a button list or a bullet list, excuse me, or a numbered list, it just looks like that. The trick is we're gonna use a little bit of CSS. Now, if I just scared you, don't worry. This CSS, I'm gonna walk you through exactly what we're gonna do, very easy. So if you're brand new to code, I'll walk you through this. And this code that I show you is gonna be available for you to copy and paste on your website. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Let's start with the bullet list. And I'm gonna use inspect element to take a look at this because we wanna find out what code is controlling this bullet list. And I do have a tutorial on how to use inspect element if you're brand new to this, so that will be linked below. So if we take a look here, you can see that this list right here is highlighted with this UL. Here's a little side note for you if you're brand new to code. Bullet lists are targeted by UL, and then numbered lists are targeted by OL. So if we look at this one, look at that. Looks exactly the same except it's OL, not UL. So that's gonna be important as we move forward because we're gonna change both. Now you'll see right away that when I highlighted this, those items popped up right here. It says ETPB text OL for the number, but then also UL for the button. So watch this. If I were to add some padding, let's do padding. Uh, and I talk about this in my CSS course, which I'll mention later. But one thing, one really cool thing you can do with padding is instead of doing pad and bottom or pad and right, like you see up here, we can adjust all the padding right here. So let's do that, let's do 30 pixels and disregard what this looks like right now because right now that's saying 30 pixels, top, right, bottom, and left, but watch this. If I do zero pixels there, let's do 30 there, and then let's try, let's see. Uh, with, the way padding works is you can do top, right, bottom, left. Remember that, top, right, bottom, left. So there's 30 pa uh, padding, excuse me, 30 pixels of padding on the top, no pixels on the right, 30 on the bottom and let's do 50 on the left. You see how that green looked right there? The green is showing your padding. And here we go. That already looks a million times better. And you can see that both of these classes were linked together because we're using text modules. And that looks great. Like we could stop right there, but we don't wanna stop right there. We wanna make it look much better. So again, what I did was just adjust the padding. There's a number of different ways you can write padding with CSS but this is the way I like to do it. I like to just say padding, and then this is gonna overwrite that. And just remember what I did right here, top, right, bottom, left. Top, right, bottom, left. So I just felt like the right didn't need padding. I mean, we could add some more, but you can see the padding that I'm adjusting there. Uh, generally with bullet lists, I don't have any padding on the right. So here's the problem though. You might think, well, this looks good. We could stick this in our custom CSS or our style sheet, and that will look good. But here's the problem. The section below this, 
I have blurb set up, two blurb modules. And what's the problem? Well, shoot, the bullet list and the numbered list is not affected at all. Reason being is that this code right here, and I'm, I'm being thorough on this for you guys. I don't want this to be confusing, but I wanna make sure I provide the best little snippet of code for you that's gonna work not only throughout your site, but throughout different modules. So this works on the text module great, but it didn't do anything to these on the module below. Now, do these look a little better in the blurb module? Yeah, but I wanna do that same look where these are indented. The reason it doesn't work though, is because these two classes right here, the ETPB text, that is saying this code goes into the text module. This little, this little, I, this little class right here, is short for the text module. So what we need to do is we need to make sure we apply this code to all modules. So I've got this copied and let's just get rid of that for now. Let's, let's uh, unmark that. So now we're back to square one, but check this out. If I look below that, and actually we can do this here too. If I look at this list, you can see that there's no uh, text module, but there is this little guy right here called entry content. How interesting. So this entry content has its own styling, and I bet if we look up here, we'll see that same class of entry content. So let's take a look. We found this. Okay, so here was our text earlier, but look at that, entry content UL. So what I wanna do is I wanna drop that padding that I created, which is gonna overwrite that, and that looks really good. Now this is only applying to the bullet list, not the numbered list, so we'll handle that next. But watch this, as we go down, oh cool, it did that one too. Reason being is because this, this little, I, this little class right here is across all modules. How cool. Now the other thing we need to do here is we need to make sure we do this for the numbered list. So, if I were a betting man, if I were to go in here, I bet, yep, there it is. That same class, except this one is for the numbered list, so now, when I put that code in there, I overwrote the numbered list, and look at that. That's some beautiful stuff right there, my friends. Looking good. So what we wanna do now, first things first, let's go to our theme customizer, and we're gonna put this CSS in there. Now, typically I recommend using a child theme, which I do have a tutorial for that I will link below. But in this case, we can just drop our CSS in the additional CSS section in Divi. Okay, so here's we're back to square one right here. And let me show you how we're gonna kind of write and format this code. Uh, I've got this, again, cleaned up and saved for you, so all you have to do is copy and paste, so you don't have to do this, but let me just w walk you through how we're gonna do this. What we're gonna do here is, I'm gonna start off by just copying this class of entry content UL, and we're gonna drop it over here. And then what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that we also do the entry content for UL. Remember, that was the button, or I'm sorry, the bullet list. So we've got those in there, and now, Let's grab our padding that we created, and I'm gonna go back to our style sheet. Now watch this. I'm saying, hey, any time that entry content is a numbered list, and then any time that entry content is a bullet list, apply this code, bam. It works on both of those, and it works on those. Look at that, my friends, looking good. If this looks terrifying, this is the reason why I have a CSS course for you, basically, um, in short, basically what we're doing is we've got a class here and then I just separated it with a comma to say that each one of these properties is gonna have that. So that's it, that is looking really good. But there's one final thing that looks slightly different here. Can you guess what it is? Take a look at the right here because watch this. If I go to back to the, uh, the original page, notice that the numbers look a little different right there. See how they're not, like these are kind of indented in with the text, it's a little more hard to read. Uh, what I recommend doing is adjusting that just a little bit, and it's actually very easy to do. And one thing I will say, if you looked at my placeholder text, and if you're seeing these goofy quotes, some of you probably recognize these. Uh, these are from my boy Jeff Goldblum, and this is a super handy, fun little uh, placeholder generator. I'll link this below, it's called jeffsum.com. Uh, but you guys can just use this instead of that boring Latin text. If you wanna get quotes from Jeff Goldblum from movies like Jurassic Park and Independence Day, you can have a blast with this site, super cool. Anywho, where were we? All right, yeah, we wanna make sure these numbers are lined up so they don't look quite like this. So check this out. Let me swing back to where we're uh, looking at the code. Look at this right here. While I'm on this section, see where it says list style position? I know, 
just as I've been dealing with CSS, I know that that is affecting the number. Now the bullet list looks great. Those line up nicely, but this one looks different. But check this out. If I were to, instead of saying inside, if I were to say outside, wow, does that look better or does that look better? Let's take that off one more time. And see, okay, let's actually, let's do inside. Look at that, that just doesn't look near, it's much harder to read that way, but if I go outside, bam, easy peasy. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this code right here and we're gonna drop that into our code right here. And once we do this, we should see those numbers. Yep, there you go. Those numbers will automatically now appear uh, left to the, to the text right there. Now, there is actually one last thing that we wanna do as well. This looks really good, but there was one other change over on the, uh, the final site, and that's that there are some spacing in between each one of these items. Now, you might think, okay, well, what if I just added some more padding in between here? Well, the problem is, is the padding here is affecting the entire section of the list. What we actually want to do is get into each list item. The way lists work with CSS, if you're not familiar, is it's right here identified by this LI. This is saying, hey, inside this number area, there's a list. So what we actually want to do is we want to target this list, each one of these items, inside this area. Now there's a number of different ways you could go about this. If we look at the code here, you can see that there's you know all these scary looking things right here. And you might think, well, what if we do like uh, margin, what if we did margin bottom 20? Well, the problem is, look at that. That affected other areas of the site. That affected the header. That's some scary stuff. That's when you can really mess things up if you don't have a good understanding of CSS. So let me show you a nifty, sweet little trick. And I'm just gonna write it out for you. Let's go back to where we have the code. I'm gonna take what I've got started here and I'm gonna make a separate section of CSS. And what I'm gonna do is after each one of these elements, I'm gonna say li for list. So we've got basically what I just did right here, li, li, adding that after those. This is saying any entry content of the numbered lists, uh, li, and then any content that has a list under the bullet section, apply this code. And what I'm gonna do is just say, you know what? Let's just give this some margin bottom and let's do, let's see how 10 looks. Look at that, my friends, easy peasy. I think we're done, that should be it. Let me walk you through really quick again what I did. Basically, I targeted the list in each one of these sections by saying, hey, any entry content that is a numbered list, the list should have a margin bottom of 10. So notice how that affected just each list item. It didn't affect the top or the, the main section around it. It just affected each item. So if we were to do something crazy like that, that's what it would look like. But I think 10 looked pretty good. That's nice and readable and we are good to go. So that's it guys. Uh, I walked you through in detail because I wanted to make sure you understood how all this worked in detail. And again, anytime you do a bullet list now in any module, it'll look fine. Going back to the beginning, if we just did that first text, it would only work in text modules, but we want this to look good throughout the site. And now the beauty is you don't have to create different modules for each one of these lists and mess with the padding or have conflicting styles all over the place. All it takes is this little snippet of code and all you have to do is just drop this into your custom CSS section or ideally your child theme style sheet, which I will have a link below where I explain that in more detail. And that's it. So this is available for you to copy and paste. Go to my go to the the, the page for this um, this tutorial, and you can just copy this. I would recommend keeping this in a, a style sheet for all of your sites, so that way you don't have to keep on copy and pasting this. As with all of my CSS snippets and tutorials, just keep it in your style uh, child theme style sheet, and you'll be good to go. And anytime you do bullets or numbers, it's going to look awesome. And just want to remind you, if you want to learn more about CSS to be able to do tricks like this and feel confident, I do have a Divi CSS course and I will walk you through all kinds of stuff like this. So you're going to be a, an absolute magician of a web designer for your clients. And more importantly, you're going to be more valuable because you can do stuff like this and you can style like a boss. So check that out. There's a code below for a discount into that course. I would love to help guide you with more CSS. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Make sure you subscribe below for more fun like this. Go over to the page for this tutorial, get this code, use it on all your sites that you want to. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know if it helped. See you on the next one.